Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the North, Tim from the South, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil War. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode 139 of the Civil Gore podcast. I am your host, Tim. And this is Brian. And we are in, I don't know what day of the quarantine anymore. Uh, days, uh, hours. 1,376. It, it's funny, like Julie today just went over to me. She goes, what's today, Wednesday or Thursday? And I'm like, I had to actually pause for a second. Oh, yeah, I have no clue. Until I could confidently say, it's Wednesday. <laughs> like I, I've gotten to where I kind of know the days based on which meetings I have on what days, but as far as date, I have no clue. Could not tell you. I have to look at a calendar every single time for the date because I'm like, oh, it's mid-April already. Okay, I, I think it's all of them. So I, I basically these three months of so it's Matchbrol to me. <laughs> That's what it is. It's it's March, April, and May. They're just going to all be one. <laughs> glob of a month of dismay well right now here's the good news brian so i you guys know we were on hiatus last week and it was because i was stressing we were trying to get our house on the market which means we had to get everything moved out of the house and everything cleaned and it was it was hectic so brian being such a nice gentleman and accommodating friend he he bent over backwards to rearrange interviews and get everything prepped to make my week as easy as possible. So uh, I was very thankful for that. But uh, we got the house on the market today, so Woo-hoo. that stress is behind me. Uh, there's a little bit of stress here because we're going to have some virtual open houses and stuff that we got to prepare for. But other than that, I mean, the big stuff's not as uh, not as big a deal anymore. So. Uh, oh yeah, I yeah. appreciate everybody being patient with that that little unexpected hiatus, but we are back and releasing regular content again. And I'm kind of glad. In fact, you're going to get two. You're going to get two this. Yeah. Uh, this the, we're, we recorded basically two episodes. We're going to have a full episode and then a mini sode. So we are interviewing three stars of the upcoming movie Behind You, which Brian and I were fortunate enough to to check out a screener of, which was fantastic. Addie Miller, Elizabeth Berkner, and Jan Broberg. So. Yeah, so that's it was really cool. They the uh they reached out to us and they were and they uh you know sent us a nice uh, screener and they they uh set up the interviews for us. So we are so thankful uh because that was you know it's kind of cool when we get to do stuff like that because you know it's it's like it just really makes it uh really fun. So you know like thanks to Chloe and Shay too who set that up uh from the the uh you know the promotion company so that was really cool so yeah so that'll be a fun this will be a fun show because we're gonna you know obviously we can't go in too much to the movie because it's brand new so our review will be very small so it'll be good that we have this extra content and the interviews were great so this will be really fun yep all right well we'll get to those right after our first chop All right, Brian. So uh, I didn't check out a lot of horror. I've been watching. I've been on a weird comedy kick lately. Uh, kind of going back and, and and I don't even want to say comedy. I I want to say more nostalgia. I've been going back and and finding movies that I vaguely remember from my youth and like rewatching them because I haven't seen them in so long. Uh, like mm-hmm. for instance, today I watched UHF with Weird Al, which I had not seen in years and years and years. So it's kind of funny. I was just kind of just like coming across these obscure me, not obscure, but obscure to me because I hadn't seen them in so long. So uh, I checked out uh, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. We had talked about Elvira the other day, and I, I had not seen that movie in a while. So I got to check that one out. That one was a lot of fun. I'd forgotten how Pee Wee's Big Adventure esque that movie is, and which is yeah. not a, not a big surprise since uh, uh, Cassandra Peterson and Paul Rubens are friends. So there's, and of course she was in. She had a cameo in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So. Yep. Uh, no, no surprise there, but it was kind of neat. Me being such a big Pee Wee's Big Adventure fan to 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 look at the similarities in that light. So that was a lot of fun. I actually, uh, uh, our friend Cone hooked me up with a <laughs> site to that you can actually play those old PC games that we were talking about. Yeah, we sent him down that that uh, rabbit hole to find that. Yeah, and I found the one the Elvira game I was talking about is actually not the original Elvira game. It's Elvira Two: Jaws of Cerberus. 
That's I the... thought it was he- Hello Mary Lou Elvira <laughs> too, but that's no, and not Electric Boogaloo Elvira too. Oh, okay. uh, but yeah, it was it's Elvira two Jaws of Cerberus. That's the one that I owned, so I got to play mm. around with that one, and I couldn't even get past the first puzzle. So it, it's exactly like I remembered. <laughs> I'm terrible. Oh my at god, it. I gotta, I gotta, you gotta, I gotta look up that link that Cone sent. Oh, so it's it's so it. amazing. I'm actually gonna go check it out again after this podcast, after we record, because there's a couple of uh, old LucasArts adventure games I want to check out on there. Yeah, and I said I found that other link right of like retro stuff too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was there, there's cool. that because a lot of these games are in the public domain now because they're well, I don't know, maybe questionably in the public domain, but you can't buy them anymore, so the publishers aren't making any money off of them. So you could yeah. the people are going out there and just kind of archiving them for posterity. So you can play some of these older games from like the early nineties and stuff. Uh, the other one I watched was Saturday the 14th. Oh my God. I told, I, I still own that on DVD. Oh my actually. gosh. I had not seen this movie. I believe I saw this in the theater. I want to say, and I had only the vaguest, vaguest memories of it. And I said, I've got to watch this cause I couldn't, uh, I couldn't remember anything about it. Of course, it's got uh, Jeffrey Tambor in it, I think. Um, yeah, Richard Benjamin. Richard Paul Benjamin, Francis. yeah. Uh, so it was that one was a lot of fun. And of course, it's got a creature from the Black Lagoon type monster in yeah. it, which was always good. So uh, that one was kind of fun. It's it's not a good movie at all, but uh, it was kind of uh, kind of interesting to go back and watch a movie that you only had like these vague glimpses of, and you you remember seeing them in the theater, but you don't remember anything about the plot, mm-hmm. and you go back and watch them. So yeah, Saturday the Fourteenth, which all actually had a sequel, which I did not know. It did, yes, which I think I begrudgingly own as well because <laughs> you're a completist. Yeah. Well, I was a completionist. I think I, I I'm pretty sure that I own it. I don't know. There was ones where I actually was selling stuff back briefly. I don't know if that made the cut. Probably not. If I if it existed or I'm maybe just imagining purchasing it. I don't know anymore. I just remember seeing it and was so upset because I did like the original and the second one was not good. Yeah. But yeah the the, the I, I'm not gonna say it's not a I won't say it's a good movie or a great movie, but I actually enjoyed it. Like I found it entertaining. It's worth going back for nostalgia's sake. Oh yeah, it's it's like yeah, it's definitely. And now, it, I mean, it doesn't basically hold up well, as, right? Yeah, like, definitely. Like doesn't. like, but it yeah, it's definitely for nostalgia's sake. It's pretty good. Now you got me one to watch it, and it's on Prime too, so it's easy to watch. Yeah. I don't even have to bring out my DVD. It's on Prime, which is good. So yeah, it's actually on Tubi TV as well. Um, oh, okay. I mean, Prime yeah. Prime would be probably your your preferred. For, uh, for no ads, but Tubi's been really knocking it out of the park lately. They've got some they, really they have. good they stuff. They've like been sneaky good all yeah. of a sudden. They just kind of like, ju- they're like, you guys are quarantined. Haha, we have your attention. Well, here you go. We're releasing content. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so I actually went back a little bit to, to the 80s myself. It was actually going to be the, the movie we were going to do if we were to record the episode last week. Mm-hmm. But with, with all this, this stuff developed so quickly... Uh, with the with the screener we got and everything, so we decided to move it all back. But I still watched the movie anyway. It was one of my favorites. It used to creep me out for one scene, which I'm not gonna, I can't mention now because Tim didn't see. No, it. No, I watched it. But I watched it. Oh, right? you did watch yeah, it. I oh, did. you saw it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'll, well, I'll give you. The, it was that scene where the rat came out of the guy's mouth. Yes, yeah. Freaked me out when I was a kid to no end, and I don't like. I don't know why because like weird things freaked me out watching horror movies as a kid. Like I could watch the most terrifying movies you know that, that people deem terrifying didn't bother me the exorcist you know all those things that, but like something like that for some reason <laughs> struck me in a way that would freak me out and i, I just loved that movie i it was it's funny because uh uh catherine harold was kind of a, a young crush of mine um when i was younger so um I always liked her. She was in uh, Modern Romance with Albert Brooks. Um, you've seen her in a bunch of stuff later on. But anyway, so she was in that movie. And uh, for those who didn't know, see it, it's like, you know, it's about this guy that kind of has these telepathic powers. And oh, and actually the other guy, the the the, the, the there's like he gets put into this mental uh, hospital at one point. And there's this one guy that he's just, he's so afraid that his head is going to fall off, so he's holding his head. Yes. And I remember that freaking me out, too, because it put a thought in my head like, oh, my God, what if someone said that to me and told me my head was going to fall <laughs> off? Would I buy it? I'm very gullible back then. You know, so – yeah, so he's like holding his. Head. It's just it's it's. But for some reason, some reason about that movie, it just I've always loved it, and it's it's always one of my favorites. And I need to I I search down. You can get a good, uh, you can get a Blu-ray disc of it, which uh, 
I think that unfortunately the one that's released for the U.S. Uh, is not as good as the the U.K. version of it. But uh, it's definitely one you should check out. It's on Hulu, so there's you know anyone with Hulu can watch this. Wait, did you like it, Tim? Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. I'm glad you pointed it out because I'd never heard of it, and um, I really really liked it. And it's a different premise. You know, it's not your typical '80s slasher or anything. Yeah, it's got, it's, right. It kind of reminded me sort of, of like the Dead Zone type thing where you have this guy with, with these kind of powers and. Um, you know, weird things happening, weird imagery. I, I, I really liked it. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Yes. So, um, yeah. And like, I, and you know, there were some good sequences of explosions and stuff in there. There was some high quality scenes and, and I don't know how, what the budget must have been for, for Paul Freeman, you know, if everyone knows as Beloche or Belloc, of course, from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, he had a big sweater vest budget <laughs> because he was in a different one in every scene. Yeah. yeah, and I thought he was really good in it too. And it's kind of weird to see him in like a non bello role, but I was w- but I was yeah. actually surprised I had not heard of this because it was so good. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was it was a leg- like one of those like movies that like it used to always be on like the movie channel when I was when I had movie channel on HBO as a kid. I've told you that's how I've discovered so many of my favorite classic horror movies, and that was no exception. And I remember that the uh, we seen the commercial for it you know advertising and i said well this looks cool i gotta watch this and when i saw it and i ended up being like terrified of it as a kid because of that scene and i think the scene when she's driving by and he's sitting there holding the sign up there's just a lot of creepy imagery in this Mm -hmm. that's like and i don't think some of it's like i mean it's obviously intentional but i don't think nowadays if you watch it you'll be like oh that's what creeped you out but i think it's the memory of it still floods back is why it still creeps me out at this point yeah and then when because you were uh, little when you saw it too or younger yeah, younger yeah. i should say but you were younger yeah. when you saw it so it always makes an impression but yeah I, I would i recommend it to a friend of mine too my friend abby she was looking for a movie and she so she hadn't seen it either so she went to watch it. so hulu coming up with a good good little hidden gem there yeah uh, if you haven't seen it so check that out and uh another thing um you know in these times, you know, it's it, you know, it's so scary with with this virus, you know, and you, you hear so much bad news. But I have to say, a lot, especially the horror community, has really stepped up, knowing that everyone's kind of quarantined and basically making what we do anyway, what we love, is watching horror movies even more fun in a way by doing a lot of like watch alongs and tweet alongs. And I've done, I told you I had done the Anna of the Apocalypse one, and there were two last week I did back to back, which was great. The first one, uh, Tim and I went, uh, did together actually. I mean, we signed in separately, but we were together as Civil Gore in the Kim and Ket uh, one where they did uh, The Witch. And oh my you know God. how Tim and I loved that movie, and how much fun was that? That was the most fun I've had. It re- I told Brian, it reminded me of my old TNT Monster Vision days where I'd be on MIRC in a chat room and we would watch monster vision and everybody would just riff on the movie. just like mystery science theater 3000 style. Like we'd all be cracking our own jokes in the chat room. And this was exactly what that was. And, but we were just making jokes about the witch the whole time. And I have not laughed that hard <laughs> during a movie, much less the witch, which is not a laugh yeah, out loud witch. comedy. <laughs> yeah, and I no. laughed more during that movie. i literally had tears. I was crying. I, mean, yeah, I cannot it, wait it, for the next one. Yeah, which is this Friday, but when this releases, it might have already taken place. But I'll, I'll make I have been tweeting it, so people should know about it by now. But yeah, no, it was it was literally like living through a Kim and Cat episode. Yes, with them, it was and so that's cool. was so great because you know obviously they were being Kim and Cat, which is the best. And then Eric, Cat's uh, uh, husband, was in there, and we were and actually I, I it was funny we, we both. Actually, me and him said the same joke at the same time. It was kind of funny. Uh, but it was like, yeah, even t- – and Tim was cracking me up, and I, like, talked to Tim all the time. And even he was, like, <laughs> bringing it with such a hilar- – like, there was something I was telling – I'm like, Julie, look what Tim was right. Because I was, like, I was laughing loudly. Like, it was, like – it was so much fun. Yeah. That, like, I didn't want the movie to end. That movie flew by in, like, ten minutes. Oh, it was so and, much fun. And for a movie that has is so notorious for its slow burn, it went by in a blink of an eye. Yeah. An eye. It was so much fun. Yeah, it was great. But, yeah, so – they're doing yeah. So the next one they're doing is Dale Tucker. Tucker and, and Dale versus Evil. Yeah. yeah, Dale Tucker versus Evil. Sorry, it's Dale Tucker. Okay, I'm on. I'm on point tonight. It's been a long week. Uh, but yeah, so that one's. Uh, I can't wait for that. Uh, just because it's fun. So if you guys, uh, hopefully you've been following our social media, promoting it for them. So you can get it. All you need is Netflix Party, which is a great addition. 
by the way. It's sim- All you need is Google Chrome, and it tells you how to do it in like two seconds flat, and you have the thing. And I know Tim and I were talking about trying to do some with our group of uh, – a coaster friends, but we might do one as a civil gore one. We're trying to figure out, uh, yeah, to do one of those. Uh, you know, if you guys and if you guys have any ideas of ones you want us to do, I, we'd love to do, of course, the Manitou, but I don't think it's available on Netflix, unfortunately. Yeah, so, it has to be Netflix. So, whatever yeah, you pick that's has to be key. Netflix. Yeah, so scroll through Netflix, see if you see anything you want uh, Tim and I to do that, and we'll, we'll gladly uh, set something like that up. And uh, right after that, I had about a maybe like a half hour break. It's and I jumped on to the Happy Death Day. One that was hosted uh, went to a charity. Um, I apologize because I cannot remember the charity that it was going for, but uh, but this involved the entire cast, uh, the director Christopher Landon, um, and everyone was joining in. It was great because it was like everyone was having a ball, and we got uh, got two likes from Rachel Matthews, of course, who played Danielle in the movie. She was great, and but then afterwards, this was awesome. So Jessica Roth told everyone head over to her Instagram live and. So she hosted Instagram Live where she was just kind of – so I went over to that and she was just like talking to everybody and then she would invite other people in. So she had um, Israel Broussard come in. She had Ruby Modine go in. Christopher Landon. So it was like she kept having other people from the movie come in on it too and split the screen so people could like talk in and kind of ask questions. And it was fun. They were just reminiscing. It was like – it was just like that was like one of the – during this quarantine with all this crazy stuff going on, it was like what a way to spend like four hours like to just enjoy horror with like horror fans and, and horror actors and actresses. It was great. So like I, I like I can't get enough of these. I mean they're like – you know, it, there's so many of them. They're almost too – it's almost getting overbearing now. I can't find – you know, like, yeah. <laughs> like you have to like pick and choose now. Yeah, yeah. So – but like, you know, it's almost like the last drive-in kind of thing. But like – but not like last driving, you know. It's like it's like a way to get ready for less driving, which is coming up before we know it, which is awesome, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for that. Yeah. Uh, lastly, we're gonna do a little bit of a just some fun speculation for Halloween Horror Nights thirty. Well, first we're gonna speculate whether they're gonna actually have it or not. <laughs> we don't know, but assuming they have it, we'll go through what the current, the most latest speculation map is. Now, keep in mind this is complete. Uh, speculation, like I said, speculation map. It, it's rumor. It's it's from a site that in the past has been more or less accurate. So we're you were kind of putting some faith into it that at least parts of this are probably dead on. Uh, maybe not a hundred percent of it. So take that with a grain of salt when you hear us. We just thought it'd be fun to just talk about it because you know obviously we don't know if, if it's going to happen or whatever. But it'd be fun to at least speculate on it and talk about some of the rumored houses and what we think of those. I think that'd be kind of fun. So we'll just kind of alternate these, Brian. First up is uh, an IP house, Beetlejuice. I think this would be absolutely amazing. Universal, of course, oh, yeah. has a history with Beetlejuice and doing um, you know character walk arounds with Beetlejuice and that kind of stuff. So uh, th- that would be a really good fit for them. It also plays into their family friendly type houses that they kind of like you sometimes like to have like well, stranger things. I would, would to me would be an example of like a family friendly house. Yes. Yes. Um, so it kind of gives them that kind of comedy house that they could do. Um, at one point, Gremlins was rumored to be an IP, which would be another fantastic oh, one in that same that vein. Yeah. That one came. That still could be. There it says a secret IP on the yeah, list, which we'll get to. They so. took that one off of the latest revision, so I don't know what that means. They replaced it with one just a secret IP. But uh, I think a Beetlejuice house would be just fantastic. And of course, there was that rumor one time at one time that Michael Keaton was going to come back and do a Beetlejuice too. But I think that kind of fizzled. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they still keep showing things, but I mean, Beetlejuice is still a hot property. I mean, there's the two Beetle houses, uh, restaurants, one in L.A., one in New York. I've been to the New York one, which is pretty cool. So he's and there was the Broadway show. So Beetlejuice is just as popular as ever. So he's um, so I think that's a good idea. You know, it also brings back, you know, because this is the anniversary year. So they're trying to bring back things from the past. And that was always a popular uh, show is the Be- Beetlejuice Graveyard Review. So, um, I, yeah, I would like that one for sure. I think that'd be really fun, uh, especially because I always wanted that Beetlejuice to ride idea yeah, that I threw yeah. into Costa Radio once. You know, I think because the music is fun. I mean, I could just see a ton of things they can do with that, you know, replicating that whole thing, like a graveyard scene, a scene at the end when she's floating. They could have people floating over you. I just think it would be really super Super cool. Um, the next one, this, this is probably sort of like a sequel house, and I have another theory with this too. So this is Universal Monsters: The Bride. So last year they had um, 
a whole Universal Monsters house. And you know how Tim and I love our classic Universal Monsters. We played Horrified a million times, and we've been playing it online with everybody. Yeah. We've tried, so we've been really like so. So that's still big. But I here's why I think that house came back. And they're specifying it. Because remember, there's supposedly like a classic monster section in their new park. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if they're going to try and keep – each year up until that park opens, they're going to kind of keep the property like milling around a little bit and fresh in everyone's mind. Even though for fans like us, it's always on our mind. But yeah. I'm wondering if that's why they want to do this house now, the bride, because maybe there's going to be – they want to see how popular that house is and see what kind of attractions they could base off of this character. You know, if they – if she's really popular, do they include her in that, that show or is it just Frankenstein? Yeah, you because know, there's a lot of speculation with that, that new park and that land. So, I mean, I'm sure Tim would f uh, flip if they changed it from – the bride to the creature from the Black yeah. Lagoon, but well, we don't know. I can't so. wait to ride my ride when, the, when that Yeah, happens. I know, right? Yeah, the Tim's ride. We, we have an inn now, uh, <laughs> one of our friends, so maybe he's going to find out for us if that's really the ride. No, he doesn't know, but uh, yeah. Uh, the next one up is an original uh, bedtime stories. We don't have a description of this. Some of these we're, 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 get, we're getting to in just a minute. We do have like a description. Yeah, bedtime story sounds sort of in the same vein as the, what was that one we... Saw Brian with like the fables. Oh yeah, twisted, twisted fables, fables. Or twisted tales. Yeah, or something. bedtime yeah. story sounds like maybe something along that kind of vein. Um, so yeah, you know, you're you're. I don't want to say typical because uh, I still think it's a neat concept, but maybe more of your like fairy tale horror. Oh, that's stuff. what it was. Scary tales. Scary that's tales. What it was yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that right. would be. That would be. Uh, so that sounds like a. Definitely sounds like a likely original. Yeah, and you know that. Uh, see, you know it's funny when I before we ever went to our first Halloween Horror Nights, I remember I was like all about the IPs because I'm like the IPs are cool. That's what I want to see because going to all the regional parks and haunts we've been to, we've seen all the original houses, and uh, we haven't seen any ones with IPs. So that's what I was super excited about. And the IPs delivered. I mean, with the exception of maybe that purge section of the the Blumhouse house, mm -hmm. which is good, which was okay, but all the other ones really hit their mark really well. But the one, but but I was actually surprised on how good those original ones, like the one with the, like that uh, slaughter cinema we love, oh, so good, and uh, the one that traumatized your kids forever, oh. uh, the Seeds of Extinction, yeah. which was really in detail. The 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 Twisted Tales we said, I'm oh, sorry, Scary Tales. Um, and so it's like the IPs, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what they, especially because this year, because they're going to go back to some classic ones. And so, but, but, but like it's, it's, I think it's, it's, so picture the IP level theming, but with the universal creativity of their own originality, which is what's awesome. Yeah. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to the, the, this time, I think more than non IP houses. Yeah, me too. Um, so next one up, Brian, Terra Crunches. Crunches? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. And what the little description I put there for you is is what I googled that, and I think that's this is a, a redo house or like a like a not a redo, but like a uh, you know one of their classic houses that they're basing it on. So uh, it may not be exactly what that description says, but it's it's what it what kind of describes what that means. So. Yeah. So this one is um, about a land ruled by the Terra Queen, and. Uh, in this world, human blood is the source of a never-ending cycle of sacrifice and creation. Blood from a sacrificial victim is used to create iron in the Gorewood Forest and in Dragon Forge's mm. Tangle Root Fire Pits. That Civil Gorewood. Yeah. <laughs> that iron is used to make the Terra Throne Blade for the sacrifices used every night at the Terra Throne, powering the Queen's rule. Then the blood of the sacrifice is used and the cycle continues as the Queen's Bone Chopper Riders, the Black Guards, deliver it. The cycle ends when Terra Queen herself is sacrificed. So, it kind of like a weird fantasy. I don't know, chopper writer. It almost sounds kind of like heavy metal ish. Yeah, weird yeah. type thing. I don't know. Again, I'm not a big. I'm not. I don't have a history of Halloween Horror Nights that the the, uh, the folks down there that are that have been going for years have. So they probably know exactly what this is. Um, yeah, they're probably like, yeah. yeah we're so, like, uh, uh, so we don't know, but uh, yeah, yeah. that seems like a throwback house. Um, yeah, the uh, the next one up, Brian. I, I'm gonna we'll just mention this because I'll, I'll let you take the Dungeon of Terror one. Um, okay. but the, yeah, secret IP we just don't know. Uh, that could be we've seen speculation of Gremlins. We've seen a Billie Eilish rumor of a Billie Eilish house, kind of res, uh, reminiscent of the Rob Zombie house. Um, 
What else do we see? I think we... Uh, well, uh, Bill and Ted is still rumored because of the movie. Maybe it's Billy Eilish and Ted. Maybe that's what they're doing. <laughs> Billy and Ted. Okay, maybe so. Yeah, maybe she's yeah, his daughter. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Hmm, yeah. Well, we know Sar- Samara Weaving is, is in that yeah. book. But yeah, so um, I don't... Yeah, we, it could be anything. Um, we saw uh, Sabrina. That could yeah, be Sabrina. it. Um, I mean, with the, with the secret IP. So, I mean, granted, I would have loved it to be Gremlins. Um, but if they're going to change it, I mean, it's kind of exciting not to know what it is. I, you know, and I, I assume it's got to be a big one. If they're keeping it a secret, then they say secret IP. If the speculators have no clue on it, that it's got to be a good one then. Yeah. So maybe it could be some kind of epic, like mashup of all the bunch of different things. We know, we don't know. So that's kind of cool. But, uh, yeah. So next one is Dungeons of Terror. And that's another one I think that's been, that's been a, a house in the past. Oh, but Brian, uh, do you remember reading about this in that book that we have of the history of Halloween Horror Nights? This was the first house. Oh, that's right. Yes, that's right. It was. And it, this one's kind of – it's funny. When you hear it, it sounds like such a generic house, but I bet you it's anything but with Universal doing yeah. it because it says – it was. It said, so this was the only haunted house that was featured during the Fright Nights originally when it was Fright Nights. It wasn't even Halloween Horror Nights yet. So they only had this. And then they said they returned it to the next year for Halloween Horror Nights 2. But uh, both houses and but uh, both houses they appeared in the Jaws queue. But it came when it came back again for Halloween Horror Nights four. But they had to move it because Jaws was working again. Yeah. <laughs> so they put it uh, in the earthquake. And this queue. is the one that so, featured live rats. Right, right, and that that rat got person. Yeah. So that I'm not really thrilled about. I got to tell you. If I end up in a in a in a in a house full of rats, <laughs> I'm not going to be happy. I'm kind of interested but, uh, in that yeah. because of it being like the. A throwback to the original, and I see, I see that one is very likely to go back to the very first house for their thirtieth right. anniversary. I think would be yes. a no brainer. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll probably be one, one. If there's anyone on here that I that I I I think was a guaranteed, that's probably it. Yeah, the uh, next uh, non IP one that they have is is Pumpkin Original. I can see this maybe being sort of like Trick or Treat, maybe a very Halloween themed jack o' lantern type one, but it also I think is it goes back to the uh the famous Halloween Horror Nights mascot. It's it was a guy he used to be he was an icon at one I think it was back on early early on when they did it. It was uh oh yeah it's called Nathaniel Crow is the guy's name. He was Jack's brother. Okay. What it, okay. Oh no he's less than Jack I'm sorry, no he's not Jack's brother. Jack's brother was Eddie. So this is just an icon that was um they never really used him apparently I guess. So he was just a rumored thing according to this. That is a whole big article on it, but basically I think he was an I I don't know if um after you know we'll report back. I'm going to look through the book again cuz I do remember that character. I think it was a character that that was featured but he was supposed to be a uh, like a headliner uh when they used to have the like they used to have icons uh oh. host the event. Uh-huh. I don't think he ever hosted it, so. Okay. But we could be wrong. We'll, I'll, get, I'll double check on that one. We'll get back to you. Uh, the next IP house would be The Haunting of Hill House, which would be a cool one. Uh, I'm always good for a good ghost house. And, yeah. and that's a very popular IP based on the uh, popular Netflix series, which is getting a sequel or a second season, I guess, which will be a different house. And um, so I, that one I'm looking forward to. I think that would, that would be cool if that, if that indeed turns out to be the case. Yeah, that, I think that would be a fun one. Um, and then, then the next one is Legendary Truth, Cary, Ohio, or just listed now on the new speculation map, it's just Legendary Truth, but Cary, Ohio was a recurring setting for Halloween Horror Nights houses and scare zones, so it was like an original area that they decided to create, I guess. Um, it was introduced in the Reflections of Fear house, um, and then I think it was, oh yeah, so it was part of the, this, one of their characters, the caretaker, it was part of his backstory, and I think they said it was in Ripped from the Silver Screen and 20 Years of Fear. So there was a bunch of time. It was mentioned a bunch. So And I think – I want to say I think I that, that in that book we read, they try to tuck it in in almost every year somewhere, like hidden mm-hmm. in there. It's almost like uh, one of these things where – I think, I think it was in Slaughter Cinema somehow or something this past time, but I'm not sure, where they mentioned it somewhere. It's like hidden in there. So we have to, we have to kind of double check that. Yeah, and the uh, the final one is just an unknown original. So one unknown IP and one unknown original, and that's a total of ten houses, which is, sounds right. And in this case, 
the latest speculation is six originals and four IPs, which I actually would not be surprised at because Halloween Hard Nights devotees are are big fans of the originals versus the IP houses. So it would kind of right. make sense for 30th anniversary to go a little heavier on the original houses. So I could definitely see that. Well, you know what? Another thing I was just thinking of could be a factor of that switch also. It, and maybe why the speculation map switch so quickly is because, you know, they may want to, you know, sometimes they may, they may want to put the houses to tie into something. And with, with, with a lot of stuff being shut down and delayed, mm-hmm. Maybe that kind of gave them an idea to kind of maybe save a save one of the another IP house for like a later Halloween. Right, Hard something Nights. that got pushed back to next year or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it could be. So it could be something with that too. But all right, guys. So let's get to our interviews with the cast of Behind You, the upcoming horror film coming out on VOD. And uh, these interviews were just fantastic. Brian, um, Addie, and Elizabeth yes. were were delightful. And I think you guys are really, really going to enjoy these 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 two interviews with uh, Addie Elizabeth and uh, Brian's separate interview with Jan Broberg. So let's get to those right now. Okay, so Tim and I were recently sent a screener for a really cool new horror film written and directed by Andrew Meacham and Matthew Whedon entitled Behind, Behind You. We are lucky enough to have the the pleasure of speaking to two of the fantastic stars of the film. So welcome to Civil Gore, Elizabeth Berkner and Addie Miller. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Look at that. They're acting. They played sisters in the movie and they they said that in unison. That was great. (laughs) So first, uh, we wanted to see, of course, both of you, how you guys are doing through this, this, these crazy, unprecedented times. We hope you guys are staying home and being safe. Yep. We're doing good. (laughs) Well, speak for yourself. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're both doing good. Awesome. So before we get into your latest film, we kind of want to let our listeners learn a little bit about you guys. So Elizabeth, you're first. Why don't you tell us how you got into acting and whether you prefer stage or screen acting more? Ooh, good question. So I grew up doing musical theater ever since I was nine. I've done multiple productions here in Utah where I'm where I live and I have always loved theater and then when I heard about Behind You which was my first film I was like okay so I tried it out and it was such a great experience and after doing a couple more films and a couple more musical theater performances I they're so different in their own special way but I definitely think that I connect more to the theater aspect of performing just because of the connection that you get on stage with the audience. Cool. And Addie, how about you? We know you got some big horror cred as the original Walker in The Walking Dead. How did you get into acting? Yeah, so um, I started out in modeling when I was like four years old. And when I was around eight is when I got my first film audition. And it took a lot of convincing, but I eventually convinced my parents to let me go audition. And I got the part. And since then, I've just been completely hooked on acting. Awesome. So so in, in doing a little research for the interview, you know, we like to find out some things. We found some cool little trivia pieces. So we'll, we wanted to ask you each about one of them that we found. So for, first, Elizabeth, this is, so I saw you, you won Best Actress in the L.A. Crime and Horror Film Festival for a short called Night Sky. How cool yeah. was that? Yeah, it was a crazy experience. I had no idea I was even entered. I heard that I got a trophy, but I've never received it. It was it was just a crazy experience. I was like, oh, I won something in LA, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it was I I loved that movie, so well short, but yeah, it was a great experience and it was really cool just to not know about it and then boom, you just won. <laughs> And it must be always nice to just find out like good news from like that you're not yeah. expecting, you know. <laughs> it was it was so fun and so spontaneous that it just made it more enjoyable instead of like stressing about it beforehand. Cool, cool. Okay, so Addy, now we found out that you did some professional wrestling, so you oh, have God. to tell us about that because <laughs> we watched the clip, we saw a clip. <laughs> and, but I want to know how that even came about because that's pretty cool. Because Tim has seen those, being you know from North oh, Carolina, I he's love, seen those kind of shows. Yeah, I love those. those. <gasps> how did you guys even find that? Oh my gosh! I think it was um, Wikipedia. Or, no, you know what? It was IMDb. I think said it that yeah. you it was in the trivia and IMDb. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, so um, both of my brothers have autism, 
And so I got involved with the Autism Society of North Carolina. And somehow I met these wrestlers. I think it was through doing comic conventions for Walking Dead. But we all came up with the idea to do a charity wrestling event. And I got to be one of the wrestlers. <laughs> and I won, by the way. I won my match. So Yeah, we saw that you did. You, you pinned them. <laughs> yeah, I, I was a great fighting little 13, 12 year old child. <laughs> <laughs> That's super cool, though. I mean, what yeah. a cool experience. Oh my gosh. I can't believe you guys found that. <laughs> Oh, uh, so okay. Well, let's go to some some big news. Your new movie behind you, which Brian and I both got a chance to check out. We really, really enjoyed it, um, and you both did an amazing job. This this question is for both of you guys, so you can answer you know however you want. But um, just tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the film. Go okay, it first. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually knew someone. Her name's Sally Meyer. She's amazing. She's adorable. We love her, and. Um, she knew about this horror movie audition that was going on kind of close to where I lived in Utah. And so I was like, horror movie? Full feature? I'd never done any film on stage besides once being an extra in, I don't know what it was exactly. It was just a movie, you know? It was just something fun to do. Get $100 to fix my phone or something. And so I knew her, and she told me about the audition, and I... I was like, might as well. So I walked in. I did, you know, the slate and the stuff. And I was in there for a good 45 minutes. And I hadn't read the sides before. And it talked about, like, there's screaming in it. And I was like, ooh, I'm a really good screamer. This will be fun. <laughs> and so they were like, I was like, oh, do you guys want me to scream? And they were like, oh, we don't need to. I was like, oh, okay. And they're like, you want to scream? And I was like, yeah. And so they're like, okay, go ahead. And then I screamed. And my mom didn't know I was going to scream. And so she was a little concerned at first, she told me. But, yeah, that's how I got into it. And call back. And then, oof. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I, I completely forgot about Liz's screaming. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, since I'm from North Carolina, uh, I had to send in a self-tape for the audition. And I guess that went well, because before I knew it, I was doing a callback on Skype for the film. And I actually found my callback on here the other day. And I'm like, oh, memories. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that was crazy. And then I guess like Elizabeth said, poof. We're doing like the read throughs for the film. And then before you know it, you're on set. It's like a, it's a very fast process. Like people don't realize how last minute everything can be in Hollywood. So it was a very fast moving process. And yeah, it was a big poof. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and so actually it's funny. That's a good lead into this because we wanted to know the next step here. So Tim and I are obviously huge fans of horror. We run a horror podcast here, but, uh, but we, one of the things we love to find out about, it's a creation process as much as we can. So what, so what can you tell us, what was it like on set? And if you had a, either uh, any kind of challenges for either of you? Okay. I'm going to start this one because I have a pretty good story. <laughs> so there's a scene where I'm supposed to be eating meat. I am a vegetarian. And this was my first film, so I was like, I don't want to tell the director, so I don't want to get fired. I'm really nervous. A little 11-year-old me just freaking out. And I eventually got, like, sick to my stomach. Like, I felt like I was going to throw up just thinking about it. It's, I don't know why. It was, I was psyching myself out. And eventually I told them, and we were able to make a pretty good compromise, which um, led on to an ongoing joke between the cast and the crew. And I have a couple of cards mentioning it after finishing filming. And so what we did, our amazing um, craft master, I like to call him, uh, he took a bone that used to have meat on it, and he put mashed up cookies on it for the shots that I didn't need to be like close up eating it so I only had to like do it close up once if that makes sense and it made it so much more enjoyable and I think that was such a fun time on set besides <laughs> when the script changes last minute before we're about to film the scene <laughs> luckily I didn't talk that much but Addie will tell you <laughs> about learning her lines like right before 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I was always in between scenes with the little call sheet of the day, like just going through because you don't really know what the environment's going to be like until you're on set. And that reminds me of another challenge. Like, I think it's the same way for a lot of film, but even though it could be a ser very serious scene, it's not very serious off camera. So there's some moments where like Liz and I are supposed to be having an intense scene and one of us is on the other side of the camera making goofy faces, trying to make the other one laugh in the middle of the but scene. But us, <laughs> never. <laughs> never. <laughs> we just had that real sister bond. <laughs> but I mean, that was a challenge because you'd have to be going from making jokes to like serious in an instant. But we pulled it off, I think. And, oh, the film was also a lot more physically demanding than I thought it would be. There's a lot more action and stunt work than I think both Liz and I planned on happening. <laughs> and um, we both did our own stunts, except I had a stunt double for one scene. And I'll let you guys figure out what scene that is on your own. <laughs> Can't give away well, everything. Well, yeah, no, because you guys, there's parts where you, you guys are kind of getting thrown around there by the uh, <laughs> yeah. the entity, we'll say. We don't want to give spoilers or so people can go see it. But, yeah, you that, wow, that's impressive you guys did your own stunts then. You guys were so believable as sisters. Did you find that easy? I mean, did you, did you click right away? I would say after we, like, got past the awkward phase it was great because the first time we met we went grocery shopping to get surprised <laughs> as she just traveled all the way over from utah where we were filming and at first i was really nervous i was like she's so much older so much more older than me she has so much more experience i'm like really nervous <laughs> and also being sisters like you have to have that connection and i was like what if we don't but we did and i just oh my gosh addy was such a help on set like looking back at it now I'm like wow I was so naive I had no idea but she really helped me through that time and I like I deeply appreciate it because it made it so much more fun and enjoyable to do oh I know you can't see me but I'm cheesing right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah um the way it is with a lot of films is normally you're the only young person on set so it really helped having Liz around because we would entertain each other throughout scenes. And I feel like we just were able to bond more because we could understand each other more throughout the whole film process. And I don't know, she was such a great young sister. She definitely challenged me to bring my A-game because even though it's Liz's first film, she didn't act like that at all. She seems like a little professional as soon as she stepped on set. <laughs> Because your acting is so good, Liz. You're such a talented Thanks, little Addie. gal. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Love you. Miss you. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, you know, you kind of touched on some of this a little bit about, you know, the, the stuff you have. But what if you had to each pick a favorite part about making this film, what, what would it be? Besides each other? <laughs> 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 yeah. um, the house was really cool. I think the whole set they had the house I feel like is its own character in a way on set I don't know I don't know how to explain it the house was just super cool and the set design people for that did a really great job yeah I would have to say like we were kind of together on this scene but there's a scene where I'm going down the stairs very dramatically <laughs> <laughs> I, we were trying to figure out how to make it effective without me getting rug burn and just to make it look good, right? And I used to have this, like, pretty big bright blue body pillow that I stole from my brother, and I brought it with me on set when I didn't have to be on screen so I could sleep because <laughs> it's 3 a.m. <laughs> the one day it wasn't. But, um, and so I, I was on the mat and then someone just like yanked it down with me and I thought it was the funnest thing in the world. And in between um, when they were doing their reactions, I would just lay on the stairs upside down. And just, I don't know, I was so out of it, but I had so much fun that I could just hang out while they were screaming my name. <laughs> That's cool. So I got a fun question for each of you. If you could pick a dream role to play, what would it be? Uh, that's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I haven't, like, I've been on TV before, but I haven't done, like, a, I guess, a regular role on a series before. So I think it'd be really cool to do TV just so I can compare experiences with film with, you know, being with the same cast for an even longer time and having to go back to that set for another season. I always think that'd be cool. Um, I don't know. What do I like to watch? <laughs> I was going to thought you were going to say WWE, but, you know, that's just... <laughs> oh, no. <you> know. <laughs> I, I already grew out of that phase. You know? <laughs> I'm going to answer real fast. I think I love Kristen Bell, and I think I loved her show, Veronica Mars. I still love it, but if you've seen that show, you know what I'm talking about. It's an amazing show, and I think that would be such a fun role to play, just solving crime and being just a really cool person, you know, and I also think she's adorable in real life, so I think maybe something kind of like what Addie said, but if but if it was like Broadway, I'd probably, that not, I can't answer that. There's too many good, <laughs> too many good ones. Cool. So I guess to, to, to finish off and everything, do you have, how would, um, if fans want to follow your career and, um, you know, and see what you got upcoming next, what's the best way they could do that? Ooh, um, I'm very active on my social media account. So I guess by following me on social media, I'll keep everyone updated. So my Instagram is at the Addie Miller and that's what my Twitter is too. And I'm the most active on those. Yeah, I would probably check out my social media, too, on Instagram. I have Twitter, but I'm never really on it. But my Instagram is Elizabeth Berkner Actor. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. This was this was awesome because we thought you both were really amazing in the film. And the film was really, really enjoyable. And I hope it uh, – so when it comes – I guess when this episode drops, um, this comes out on – we're recording this on Wednesday, and the film uh, debuts on Friday, correct? So I guess, yeah, so we'll make sure we share uh, this on our uh, social media page to make sure everybody knows about it and can check this out. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Thank yeah, you, guys. Okay, so Tim and I were graciously provided uh, with a screener for the new horror film entitled Behind You, and we're lucky enough to have on one of the stars of the film, and she decided to come on and chat with us for a little bit. So welcome to Civil Gore, Jan Broberg. Hey, thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming. So so before we start, though, I just want to ask you, uh, you know, of course, how are you doing uh, with this crazy time? Hopefully you're, you're staying socially distant and getting to stay safe. Yeah, I've been able to work from home most of the, most of the time. And I've done a few, you know, projects that you just never think you're going to have time for like clean the garage and some drawers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I did end up having kind of an emergency a dental emergency so I had oh, to no. go to the dentist and had to have a couple teeth extracted which Oy. is kind of why my voice is a little weird today because I'm still recovering from that little surgery but I'm good I'm doing fine and getting some other things done besides just constant work and spending time with my my mom my son my sister my niece my nephew that live right here right close and we're all just social distancing together <laughs> well that's good yeah that's a, the way you do it. it's so weird uh the time but you know what it's a it, it's also it, it's it's it is opening up these new things like you know you're getting projects done you're you're yep. trying new technologies out to 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 get through things so it's, it's exactly yep done a lot of zoom stuff and you know mostly i think it's just a good time to reflect and hopefully try to maybe slow down a little bit and put some priorities in place and it's been okay i mean you have to look at the the bright side of every situation unless right. you're in a horror movie then you can look at the dark side right. of everything right which we're used to here so that's good so that's okay yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but but uh, so before we get into behind you though um you had a lot of various roles on stage and tv and movies um so i want to know do you enjoy one of the mediums over the other and what are some of your favorites you know it's funny because i really do love all, all of it. Like I started with, you know, stage and that became, you know, musical theater became my home for a long time. And I made my living by, you know, working at Disney World in Florida. That was my first professional job. And then it just kind of morphed and transformed into somebody seeing me in a play at Sundance. And then all of a sudden I was doing film and TV work and I loved that. And I, I guess some of my favorite experiences have been 
um, doing a role like I just finished a little touring company playing Daisy Worthen and driving Miss Daisy. Oh, wow. And my cohort that played Hulk, uh, Clarence Gilliard, who's, uh, you've seen him on Matlock and Walker, Texas Ranger, the black guy that's the, the other star of those TV shows for years and years. And he was just a phenomenal actor and super nice man. And and uh, we just had such a good time. And so that was like, you know, aging from like age 70 to like, I was, I think, 94 when the play ends or something. Oh, wow. <laughs> you do it all on stage. All of, you don't ever really leave the stage. I mean, I'm in every, almost every single scene. Like that was super, super fun and exciting because, you know, just the nuances and the detail of just how am I going to age in this you know 20 seconds when I don't have time to change my makeup or anything it's just got to be through breathing and just how your walk changes and so all those sorts of things those are the things that I love and that's what I loved about this particular role in this film was you know how do I transform into this character and make it honest and, and believable but it's so so different from anything that I had done so I love those challenges that's kind of my favorite but I you know I really do love all all the things I do as long as it's acting I, I'm pretty much in love <laughs> oh great great <laughs> um and so this is not your first foray into horror films either so I saw that you were previously a maniac and mm -hmm. at Devil's Door um so do you find yourself at all looking for for roles in horror or you does know, or is it just kind of what, what's available you kind of look for the just interesting projects altogether yeah I think that really most actors are just you know, really hoping for just the next thing, you know, because it's not a stable, steady environment. So something comes along, and you think, oh, that would be fun. I think we're pretty open. Like, I'm not, I guess, at the level where I just, you know, pick and choose all the projects at my beck and call, you know, <laughs> but I, <laughs> but I have had a lot of variety in my, in my acting, you know, career. And I really do uh, there is something really exciting about doing horror because it's such, it's such an interesting genre. Like the maniac that I, that, that horror film that I did with Elijah Wood, I played a completely different character. I was kind of the hero kill. Like I was a real snobby, bitchy art agent, rich, <laughs> and you kind of wanted him to kill me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you kind of wanted him to scalp me, <laughs> you know, but this character was something I'd never played where, you don't know if she's, is she more dark than, is she more evil or good? And, and it was nice to like play on the juxtaposition of your, of your various um, emotions. Like it, it was, a, it was really fun. Actually, this was a really interesting character for me to build. So I, I really enjoyed it. Oh, cool. Okay, so let's let's get into the 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 main topic at hand here about uh, behind you. So we're uh, Tim and I, who of course he couldn't uh, join me in the interview tonight, but uh, my co-host, we're both huge fans of horror. Obviously, <laughs> running a horror <laughs> podcast, but uh, awesome. But yeah. Um, one of the things we love to find out about is the creation process as much as we can. Uh, you know. So what was it like on set, and were there any challenges for you at all? Um, the set. Our crew was great. The other actors in the film were just terrific. I we had a really cool house that we we used on location, and that really helped set the stage and the scene because it had that feeling from the '70s. So I don't know if there's something about everybody's childhood that you know that you kind of go, oh yeah, those were the, those scary things when you were scared of monsters under your bed, and there was something about that home, especially when you went down the stairs and it had a whole feel and look of, of a home, you know, built in the seventies. And I don't know why, but my basement in my house in the seventies was a little scary to me as a kid. So I, I think that was a rule for basements in general. Yeah, <laughs> It was like, you know, little tiny windows and just kind of that narrow, you know, stairwell. And anyway, so, um, yeah, what, what, anything particularly challenging, I think mostly it was, the uh, some of the um some of the language you know that she was you know into the books and all these different things that she was you know reading and studying and and had studied up on throughout these many years of 
trying to figure out what had happened and I don't want to give the story away. But, yeah, I know. You know? I, I was like, I definitely don't <laughs> want you to spoil this because that, <laughs> that's actually, <laughs> yeah. Cause that's actually one of the, the, the strengths, like uh, Tim and I were talking about this, uh, that we, one of the strengths of this movie is that you, you know, there, there's a couple, a lot of twists and turns in it and the surprises. Yeah. So I definitely, I, and I've, I've actually catered the questions to make sure that we, I don't try and give away anything, which is good. Yeah. Which <laughs> so. is, I think what I loved about it, about the script is that it was a really good story. Cause sometimes you get horror and it's all just kind of about the you know you know scaring people and and sort of maybe it'll have the beginnings of a good story but it never ends like oh I'm unsatisfied this this particular film has a good story with all the twists and turns I think so I, I really liked the writing of it Oh yeah, no, de definitely. And it was, it was, it was very engaging to the point of where, you know, you, you, you know, like I kept, and I kept thinking, I figured out what was going to happen next. Cause you know, I've seen so many horror movies, but like, it, I, I'd say at least three or four times it, it, it changed my expectation of what was going to happen. So that's always a good sign to me of a good script. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> good. That's fooling, really good. You know, people. So it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I liked about my character too. Cause you don't know, she's got a lot of different levels and things going on in it it's not all revealed at once or in a way that you kind of expect. So yeah, I loved that part. Right. And, ha and you had to, you had to, you know, it was kind of uh, a difficult because you had, um, you know, you had your character and then you had some young leads there too, that were really, you know, uh, you know, like, you know, I think um, Elizabeth was only around like 10 when she filmed this. Right. And, right. And Addie must be, and they, and it was like, it, it worked so well. Like there, it seemed like it was a very, just a, cohesive cast which I liked it was really yeah. good yeah I felt that way too and they were they were just really great great um you know great kids but they were great actresses they really they really had a natural just ability to be vulnerable and let it the right emotions and stuff just you know be seen and come out and yet not too much it was yeah I, I felt like it was a really strong cast I loved I loved all the my my basic us basic four that were throughout were we were pretty close i i thought it was fun <laughs> yeah no and it really it, it makes a difference you know i think so when you have such a strong cast like that and you know it was and another thing that tim and i had discussed is it was a very claustrophobic environment in there you know it was all in that one house so it really is i, th I always think it's important for a cast to be strong when you have such a you know like a, a tight setting and i think you guys all did yeah. such a great job with that so what was uh, your favorite part about it? Um, did you have, and if there's any like fun stories you have from the set? Well, one of my favorite memories of uh, was I actually, I had a documentary that had come out on Netflix around this time. And, and I uh, had to, I had to go to a, I don't know, I had to go somewhere and, and do a, uh, well, I don't think the documentary had even come out yet, but I went, I was invited to do Dr. Phil show, the Dr. Phil show. And so it was kind of in the middle of, you know, the whole filming and everybody was so supportive because, you know, this other part of my life where I'm trying to, you know, save kids from sexual abuse and it's sort of an advocacy work that I do based on my own personal childhood story. And, and so just the way that everybody treated me when I, went and then when I came back and it was flowers and it was you know it was just really my birthday and I don't know it was just like it was just like a family and that's the kind of thing that I think you know you're watching these characters and they come across maybe kind of odd scary or different but behind the scenes everybody is super especially in this cast everybody was just super nice and you know and I don't, again, I don't want to give the story away, but even the most right. creepy yeah. of characters all yeah. were so fabulous and such kind people. And so for me, that was a really special memory of that little bit of time because I literally didn't sleep for almost 72 hours. Oh, my God. Oh, me. wow. But that's so great, though, that you got so much back. support through all that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's it was awesome. Really cool. Yeah. The documentary that did come out eventually was the one that's on Netflix called Abducted in Plain Sight. And that's. Oh, right, right. So I just, you know, I'm just trying to tie that together with everybody out there listening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so also, uh, here's again, I am going to preface this again without giving away any spoilers because it, that would, it would totally do a disservice if people went in knowing too much about this movie. So, but your, your, your character in the movie, as it was kind of, kind of hinted before, has a bit of a transitional arc to, uh, mm -hmm. to it. And we both thought you did a fantastic job, by the way. But um, was that hey. difficult to change gears at all? And, and did you channel anyone specific kind of in your portrayal of, of Beth? Um, 
Yeah, it's interesting. Almost always when I, when I look back on it, I really see, like, I'll think of certain people that have, that are close to me that have characteristics that I'll think, oh, kind of like this, but then also like that person. And I, I realize as I look back, I'm like, oh yeah, it's a, really a combination of several different people. So like my, my mother, my, my, my mom is actually a very even tempered, um, like I think I heard her yell or swear maybe once in my whole childhood and it made us all cry because we'd never <laughs> experienced it before. My exact opposite scary. of my parents, by the way, if they're listening, I'm <laughs> sorry, but yeah, they, I learned cursing pretty early. I'm just going to say. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so I think back on that and, and I knew that, that, that Beth needed to have kind of this, this kind of quiet, strength that you were kind of always questioning what you know what's underneath that or behind that sort of thing behind you hello yeah. anyway um, <laughs> so I kind of I had that kind of like my mother's emotional energy is one of just kind of you know one foot in front of the other just accomplish the next thing don't get too upset don't get too you know, she just has that even temper. And so she became a social worker. She's just that way. So there was a little bit of my mom, because I'm much more like my father, who was a florist, owned a flower shop. He was more of the, you know, playing the piano and then being dramatic at the dinner table. And, you know, I was, I was more of an emotional just by nature, like my dad, but I needed to be more like my mom. And then there was also my mom's older sister, who my aunt Nadine, that I was slightly scared of when I was a kid about the ages of those two girls in oh, this okay. film. And I thought, what was it that made me, because she's the sweetest person, but why was I afraid? And I realized it was because she made my cousins. I had a cousin, her son, that was exactly my age. And then a, a, another one, a couple years older than me and a couple years younger than me. And they had to eat all the food on their plate. And we didn't have to do that at my house. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in their plate, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a breast sprout on my plate. What am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. oh, I can't stand those things. And so I would smash it in my mouth and then I would, and then I would cough and I'd put it in my hand. I'd do a little cough and then I'd stick it in my pocket, the Brussels sprouts. And my mom found them and she's like, what, what's going on in your pocket? I'm like, well, Aunt Nadine wanted us to eat all of our food on our plate and I don't like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> so my little fear at about age, you know, that was my early, you know, like age five, six, seven, eight, those early childhood memories. That's the, the thing that, that scared me. So I kind of channeled a little bit of her in her kind of strictness of certain things that were certainly not familiar to me from my mom, but I, I, so that's what I do. I kind of take little pieces, but I figure all those people, they're in me anyway. They are just parts. We all have all those parts in us. We can all be a little bit, you know, mean and a little bit quiet and a little bit loud and a little bit everything. It's just what you're going to accent or use out of your own, your own emotional, you know, uh, scale. But, but I do, I, I like to think of people in my life that, that maybe have given me a similar feeling of what I think I'm supposed to give that feeling to others in my scene, you know, my other castmates. So that's what I do. <laughs> I wish I could have done the trick for my vegetable that I didn't like though. Cause my, mine was, was, uh, was, uh, this, uh, like steamed zucchini. So that was too liquidy <laughs> to kind of put in a pocket. So I oh, had to force myself. <laughs> yeah. Not that I was forced to eat it, but you know, uh, yeah. you know, they, they, they wanted me to eat it. My, my right. parents. So when I right. tried to, I just, okay. I just kind of, sucked it up and ate it but <laughs> i wish it was a little bit of a, a more stable uh, vegetable i could have done your trick but a horror you know. stories with vegetables that yeah. we all share <laughs> uh, now i love them though go figure who knows i, I, I think I that, that i think that thing where they say your your tastes totally grow oh yeah as you do is is a true thing i never Absolutely. thought it was the case but okay <laughs> no i agree i totally agree i couldn't stand tomatoes all the things i love today i love brussels sprouts we just had them the other night <laughs> yeah, yeah well i know and actually my wife i have to say makes these amazing like roasted brussels sprouts she puts oh. all the spice on it and puts it in the toaster oh, yeah. oven and oh it's so good oh. but uh, well, yeah, you, if you put enough if you put enough olive oil on pretty much anything yes, and roast it, it's gonna be delicious <laughs> that's true that that's what, and that's what she does so that's then awesome. that, well this is good because i'm going to reuse this interview on our my vegetable <laughs> side podcast that we have but uh no. 
funny. <laughs> um, but uh, okay, so we'll get back to the movie here, so uh, okay. so we can actually help promote you uh, promote this. Uh, That's good. Um, That'd be good. We want to promote it. We want yeah. to watch it. <laughs> right. They're going to be like, I have learned a cooking show, but okay, no. But um, <laughs> so uh, so if someone would ask you to say what why why should they watch behind behind you, what would you say? What would your selling point of this be? Okay, so one, it does have a really good story, which I which I really really think is really somewhat. Uh, not unusual. I'm sure there's lots of horror movies that have good stories, but I like this story. I think it's a, it's different. And so I think, I, yeah, I just think people will really like it for those reasons. Like it was a very um, inventive and unique story. So I like that. I think that people should watch it because we're all going through a really scary time with this whole COVID-19. And I think it's important to go through uh, kind of a cathartic experience in fear and get to the other side of it and go, Oh, look, we're still alive. We're right. going to be okay. <laughs> right. you know, we, we definitely need that. <laughs> yeah, we need that. So I think that having that little bit of that little bit of shared fear um, in a way that resolves itself because you don't die. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> you know, we, we, we make it through. That's why I think horror, horror genre is so important is because it's a shared human emotion that every human feels and so getting to the other side of it and, and going through it I think is a really good release I think it's a really important thing for us right now let's see my last reason is because we really need people to support independent film and independent filmmakers and and we we really you know you work really hard and you do it on a budget and everybody is throwing in you know their own um, way of contributing to that that independent film and I think it's really important that people support support them just it's a good movie you'll like the, I think you'll really like it but it's also because we need to show our support that way a lot of times you know there just isn't the budget to promote so many of these really great movies um, and the way you can support independent filmmaking is by watching you know get it on get it on and yeah. show it to everybody and tell people about it. So. Well, yeah. right. And Tim and I have always been, since we've actually started the podcast, we've always tried to promote independent film, you know, cause you know, at one point it had that, you know, that, that, Oh, it's an independent film. But, you know, I think nowadays, yeah. I think that's a strength when you get oh, that yeah. because you see some of the best movies come yeah. from that because they, you know, people work harder on them and, and you know, and they don't right. have the big budget. So they, but but you can tell that they put everything they have into it, and right. to me that shows, and that's why I will always like I, you know, I, at one point I was a film student, so it's like yeah. uh, you know I didn't obviously go that way in in real life, but but you know uh, you know and I wanted you know when I was uh, you know trying to go to film school I saw how hard it was and and I could appreciate the the, the effort it goes into, so I am like you just send one my way and I will proudly support it and help promote yeah. it. Because <laughs> oh, I think that's so great. Yeah, it really is important. And we can do so much right now with being at home and going through this, this pandemic that, you know, is so unprecedented. We, we have the opportunity to, you know, watch a little bit more and to, you know, gather, you know, with just our little, you know, band of brothers and, and loved ones, <laughs> you know, yeah, just it's... to actually, you know, share some of those experiences. I think, I think watching a film is one of those very connective things. It gives you something to talk about. And I, I just think, yeah, let's, let's support the independent films. <laughs> right, yeah, no, And there's a lot of, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of, um, at least in the horror community, because obviously we're in, involved in a lot of ways yeah. through social media. There is a ton of watch parties that people are doing nowadays. Oh. Oh, see, you that's know, cool. yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, it kind of started, I don't know if you uh, know that show on, on Shudder, uh, The Last Drive-In by Joe Bob Briggs, he hosts Oh, I've a, heard of it, but I've never, yeah, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. so he, he kind of almost, you know, when his show comes on, there's just like, just massive amounts of people that jump on Twitter and they watch along and they tweet along, but now they're doing way, you know, much more, uh, you know, kind of organized ones, it seems like, where yeah. like a full cast will jump on and, you know, and the, the creators will be on there watching with you. And, you know, yeah. it, and it makes it really, it, it, you know, brings you together when everyone right now is feeling so isolated, you exactly. know. Exactly. And that's the kind of thing that you can have a little more time to actually do right now. So do yeah. it. You right. Know? Yeah, I mean, you I can't go that. out anywhere. So. <laughs> nope. So. But didn't you love going to drive-in movies? When you think about that, there was something interesting, not because we were all 
talking to each other, but there was just something so communal about that, yeah. that experience, you know? And so to do that in sort of in an online setting, it really is true. Like I, I run the theater and obviously we're not, we had to cancel a bunch of shows and concerts and stuff. So we started streaming some of our best, you know, local and regional musicians um, in like a concert format uh, just for free, just for the community. And it's so fun because you're on Facebook and it's streaming this concert of, of musicians that are not well known. And people are like, Oh my gosh, who is this? And you're typing and you're responding. And it's like, this is cool. I feel connected. And I, oh, cool. even though I'm by myself, you know, um, just trying to answer people that I don't even know, or that didn't even know about our theater, but but they came on to maybe support one of their friends or something. And then they're seeing all this other amazing talent. And that's the kind of thing I think we can, we can certainly do right now. And, and there is a community um, component to that, that, that can build our connections, even though we're at a distance. Right. So. Right. It's, it's, if we can find some kind of something like that through this, Common. then it's it, that we can all get through it together. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, so, oh, this is fun. <laughs> oh, um, so before we go, uh, we want to ask you a fun little question here. So if, okay. and I'm sure you've probably been asked this, I'm sure every actor has been asked this at some point. So if you had to pick a dream role to play, what would it be? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know I, if we're coming so from my hard. end, I figured like, oh, it's so easy. You should probably have it right up. But yeah, but then I realized you know, every time we ask that it's, it's, it's harder than, <laughs> So it's interesting because now that I am this age, when I was, um, what was I, a senior in high school, my first year of college or something, anyway, a big acting thing that, you know, you competed in something and I took the book Sybil and I wrote a scene, a nine minute scene or wrote, basically took pieces and became all about, I think six or seven different characters in that nine minutes because it was Sybil, <laughs> you know, it was that. <laughs> and because I had seen it on TV with Sally Field and I was just so like, you know, horrified and so moved and so whatever. And so I think if I were to have a dream role, it would be to take like some of my own life experiences and the players in my own life scene and portray my own horror story from my life but in a way that ends happy because that's who I am today and how I've come through things. I think that would be a really interesting and cathartic journey to kind of explore your own life and the characters in it, both bad and good and the good, bad and the ugly and, and be able to come through that catharsis on stage um, or in a film and, and show that that journey, it, it doesn't, define you it doesn't destroy you you get to make the choices and how you turn out sort of in the end I'd like to give people that kind of um experience like like a, a hopeful experience through the very hardest and worst parts of life and how you choose to modify and change and go down a different road or path or shine the light for somebody else I'd like to create that <laughs> Wow, that's a great. That's, some, that's great. If though. somebody out there wants to help me, I want to do that. I want to do it for a long time. <laughs> well, if you get it going and you need a place to promote it, you just come see us. We'll, really? Uh, okay. Stories. Well, my 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 childhood was a horror story too. So why not? I could come here. It's it's horror and it's all yeah, right. Yeah, no, we, Every, we everybody's you know, is. You're 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 you know when when you come on Civil Gore, you anything you guys need, we we we're happy to help out. Okay. Well, that would be very cool. So that's that's my yeah that's my wish. I don't know can't think of just a role in and of itself that would satisfy me, but that would be very satisfying. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. That's great. So just that, I guess just to finish off, um, if there, if you want to uh, let our listeners know um, where they can uh, to find you on either social media or a website or something to kind of keep oh, up, up nice. to date on your career and stuff. So to promote away. Basically. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> so it's, it's, my name is very simple. So it's just Jan. Like J A N, no Janet, no Jane, no Janice. It's just three letters. And then my last name, which I always tell people how to spell it, is Hey Bro. Watch out for the iceberg. So Broberg is spelled like that Bro and Iceberg. Broberg, Jam Broberg. 
com is my is my website and that's pretty much my facebook my twitter my <laughs> instagram it's all just my name jan broberg and i'd love for people to you know be in touch um, on any of those platforms because i i'm getting ready to launch a book and and working on a series um about my story and again you know trying to do some good in in helping you know people heal from maybe their past harm or their past horrors in their life and move forward and that's just really important to me oh great <laughs> so we'll we'll um and we'll make sure that we uh you know we, we share all that uh, information for everyone too so oh that's really really nice thank you so. <laughs> so yeah great so thank you so much for coming on um and like i said anytime you want to come on you're working on any project you want to uh want us to help promote just just say the word yeah brian so that was a lot of fun i really appreciate those guys reaching out to us and and agreeing to come on and talk about their experiences with the movie and uh which we're going to get to here in a in a second with a very spoiler free uh impressions of the movie but uh that was a lot of fun and uh, really really fun interviews yeah, that's so. Th thank you again for everyone for coming on and for uh, for the just getting uh, you know taking some time out to talk to us about it. And uh, we're you know it, you know it's it it really is a fun thing to do when we get to to you know find out about uh, you know just behind the scenes a little of the of the movies that we watch. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, very very cool. All right, Brian. So let's get to our feature film, which is Behind You from twenty twenty. Directed by Andrew Meacham and Matthew Whedon, brother of Josh Whedon. And yes, he, I was going to say, if you recognize that Whedon name, you are recognized. That is his brother. Yep. <laughs> uh, Addie Miller plays Olivia. Elizabeth Berkner plays Claire. Jan Broberg is Beth. Philip Brody is Charles. And Amy Lynn Chadwick as Camilla. And here's the synopsis. Two young sisters find that all the mirrors in their estranged aunt's house are covered or hidden. When one of them happens upon a mirror in the basement, she unknowingly releases a malicious demon. And Brian, I don't know about you, but I, I'm a big fan of like the Conjuring series and and these James Wan haunted movie, haunted house movies. And I love anything that has ghost in mirrors. Oculus, yes. Oculus is another great one. I mean, anything where and, and I say a love, I say that hesitantly because those are always filled with jump scares, and <laughs> those always terrify yeah. me. So these movies, not only uh, I love them, but I also am terrified of them because I don't like the idea of things popping out in mirrors. Yeah, and this one did a, it. It kind of did it uh, a little bit unique. I mean, as the title suggests, it's it's not, a, a lot of times throughout the movie. And, and like I said, we, we we apologize for a brief review, but it's just so brand new. We don't want to go through this movie in super detail because we want you to watch it but um what they do i think great in this movie is that it's not jump as jump scary as most of them are they do it very a lot of it like the title says behind you there is a lot of stuff like in reflections more than 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 actually outwardly you know what yeah. I, you know what i'm trying to say it's like yeah. it's like it's not as like jump scary as where tim would jump out and like i mean and, and you know the things that they do show are done really creepy yeah. <laughs> and it's like which really enhances it and i think that kind of this like it kind of gives this whole unnerving element throughout which is what i would assume would be the intention because <laughs> you know because it, it is a horror movie after all and i think you know it, like you know you said you know you like movie like movies of this style so that while the trope is familiar i think the cast did such an amazing job that it kept it really fresh still yeah and like uh addy said in her interview about the character of the house i think was really really good because the film yes, yes. is very claustrophobic and it takes place almost entirely in this one house and i think that really helps set this uh this creepy tone for this movie and i really really like that about it i like the the whole uh, the whole atmosphere. Yeah, and it it kind of it kind of keeps you, you know. You, you I have to say it like it, like you know. Nowadays we watch so many things, and usually like okay, well this is what this is gonna happen, or this is gonna happen. This one, I, this one did a really good job, I think, of of kind of like kind of uh, subverting my expectations a little. Where I thought it was gonna go one way, and it turns out it like makes a turn, and then another turn, and then another turn, which is really cool that you could still do that and nowadays when you know so many things you've you feel like you've seen before the fact that this could could still make me not think i was always on on point to what was going to happen 
was it was good. I, I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I definitely like that about this movie. Um, it again, I'm struggling to talk about it without going into any spoilers whatsoever because I want you guys to see it. But um, yeah, it I totally agree. It I had a pretty good handle on what this movie was going to be when I started it based on the you know the li- what little I knew about it, and uh, it definitely went in directions I did not expect at all. So that was uh, something I really really liked about it. I mean, and when any really, yeah, when any movie does that, it it's it's you know, it goes a different way than you expect. You, you, especially in a horror movie like that, I, I it's always a, a positive. And you know, I mean, I know we said this before, but I do want to say again, the cast I think really carried this movie well. Yes, because this this you know, when you are in a claustrophobic environment and there is a like an animate object as a an own you know its own character that can sometimes steal the movie away but i thought this balanced really well where the characters were you know the the, the performances were so strong that it kind of it just gave a good balance to everything so the house could be its character but it didn't take away from it and the actors actors didn't take away from the the house either it was like a, a nice mix yeah and elizabeth this was her first major film role and she did just a fantastic job because she has to. He plays a very major role in this movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I wasn't sure. You know, when you first see this movie, you don't know how how big of a role that anyone's going to play yet. Because I, re- like I said, when we found out about this movie, we didn't really know much about it. And I, I was really impressed how well she did through. You know, especially now finding out it was her first movie. Yeah, all the performances I think really elevated this movie above and beyond what you might expect in this kind of budget range. And uh, it never feels like a lower budget film at all it's a very high production values yeah no and they said they were saying how it was like just a tie like i read in the, some of the notes that it was like they were really on a they were working on a limited budget yeah. well i was surprised whatever they yeah, had i was actually surprised yeah. when i read that because it does not at all feel like a lower budget movie at all no, because I mean, they were, they, you know, the when they needed the effects, they did them really well. I did read though they actually used uh, the Pepper's Ghost effect, yeah, in a couple of shots, which I thought which is always one of my favorite special effects because it's so simple, yeah, yet so effective, you know. And for those who don't know what that is, just if you've ridden the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland or Disney World, you'll know what we're talking about. It's that it's the way they make their go. So, yeah. So, it, but so I mean, it's like I, yeah, I was surprised too when I read that because I'm like, it didn't feel low budget at all no. actually but i mean that's what that's what a good good performances and good and just creativity can do for a movie so you don't and remember we've heard this a million times joe bob said it too remember it's not your budget it's your script yes. if you have a problem with it and so obviously this was uh you know this one t- had a low budget but it, it was effective what they did so. yeah yeah um so guys definitely check this out friday when it drops on VOD, I think it's going to be available on pretty much all the major platforms, Brian. Yeah, yeah. We, we tweeted out so far. When you're listening to this, it may already be out. Um, I know we had tweeted the link out uh, for Apple TV, but it's on. It's pretty much on everything. It's going to be on all the, the major cable networks, Comcast, DirecTV, uh, Cox, Charter, Time Warner, Dish, Verizon, Frontier. Um, and then also the digital thing is going to be on Apple TV and iTunes, Amazon Video, Vudu, Google Play, Microsoft Movies and TV, Fandango Now, and Redbox On Demand. So pretty much you have every chance to see this. So may, don't don't miss it. Yeah, yeah. D- definitely check it out and support these guys and this wonderful, wonderful cast who were so, so awesome to talk to. Uh, and uh, a great movie to watch while you're quarantined because it's yes. definitely got that that claustrophobic atmosphere. Yeah, and it's great that we're still getting new content through yeah. this in some way, shape, and form through this. Because we, Tim and I were joking. Uh, we were talking earlier. We're like, can you imagine back – like, you know, we're children of the 80s here when – and we were saying like, you know, like, thank God we have all this now because – there was a time when, like, when we were growing up, this is what happened when we were in, like, in grade school and, and early. We ha- That's all we had was what was on cable, what we had in the house. There was no demand, yeah. uh, on-demand yeah. stream. Well, there was pay-per-view, but it wasn't the same. Like, it wasn't like you have access to 50,000 yeah. titles. And your mom wasn't going to let you get pay-per-view. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pay-per-view was, like, a big thing if you got it. Like, that was a treat. You know, now it's like all over, you know, it's the streaming service and all that. And, and you know, there was no internet in the way it is now where you can chat with your friends really other than like a slow modem that you had to take the phone off and put it on a 
on another thing you know i'm mean, like so it's like so yeah so we're lucky we got this new context so definitely check this out behind you um like we said we gave all the all the all the things all the places you can get it for and uh yeah so check that out and help uh support this cast and spread the word all right brian so what was our beer pairing this week so i couldn't believe this i actually found a beer pairing for a movie that literally just came out this is awesome <laughs> that's how good i am at the beer pairing but <laughs> but uh basically and then the beer is called behind you <laughs> perfect <laughs> and it's from federation brewing company out of oakland california so i can definitely check this brewery out uh it's five percent it's a light refreshing blonde ale that goes down smooth very basic description um but the fact that the title matched uh, was yeah. was a gimme but i also included if you see on here tim i included the um the link to this site which doesn't seem to be working oh there we go um because they got some funny names of other beers that i i figured i just had to mention so there was one in here called Wrath of Flan, Milk Stout, and it shows like Khan and, and some other woman there, so it's like Wrath of Khan, but it's Wreck of Flan. Hmm. There was one called Secret Porpoise IPA, nice. and there's a big porpoise on it. Then there's Mr. Nuggetsworth. I don't know what that is. There's Red Shirt Irish Red, which makes fun of all the red shirt people in Star Trek to die. Um, and there's Violet Beer Regard, which was <laughs> is a sour. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, this place is right at, uh, at Tim and I's heart nice. with all these... Uh, puns but yeah so that's that one so i guess it's time to go into our triple, triple threat. threat and we got two guesses we got two davids got yeah it. good buddy david terry and our other buddy david McHugh, who goes i think by the what's it, horror mailman yeah good Twitter. job guys he, he got that definitely too. good job so yeah you guys got one this was a tricky yeah, this one. one was actually trickier than i than i first uh thought we were looking for a director and the answer was lee one l uh clue number one when i directed while I directed only one, I acted in four films of a very popular horror franchise. So Lee directed Insidious Chapter 3, yet played Specs in the first four Insidious films, plus in the Insidious Spectral Sightings TV series. Yeah, that's the one that st- I think stumped a lot of people. But David had a good guess. Though. He had some good guesses yeah, in there. Yeah. David Terry, before he, he got the right one, he was he's had some good guesses that really could have fit. Yeah. Uh, Almost. <laughs> clue number two. I've also appeared in a few films and wrote several in another extremely popular horror franchise, but I've yet to direct one of them. We were, of course, talking about the Saw franchise, where in parts one, two, and three, he played Adam. He wrote he wrote Saw one, two, and three. And although there were eight Saw films and an upcoming one, Lee has yet to direct one. And then the last clue, my last release film I directed is somewhat of a remake of a classic horror film. My next one is another remake, although not a horror film. So Lee's latest latest film, of course, was Invisible Man, which is fantastic. And he will direct the yes. upcoming Escape from New York, which is a remake of the Kurt Russell classic of the same name. Which Escape from New York, not really horror, but sometimes you see it kind of tossed in there because of Carp- John Carpenter. John yeah. Carpenter, yeah. I mean, so, yeah. But, I, I, but, yeah, it's really not horror. But, I mean, it could be. Look at, Well, listen. Right now, Escape from New York is what I feel like I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm so. in living in yeah, New York right. with what's going on. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, guys. So this week we're looking for a horror personality. I think this is a this is a softball, guys. This is this. It's year. a softball, but I tried to make it tricky. Yeah, so, so uh, give her that. Let, let that sink yeah. in. So. All right, horror personality. Here we go. Clue number one: the name I'm referred to is not my real name, but a character I play. However, my so-called real name isn't my actual name either. Hmm. Clue number two. I recently appeared in a high-profile fan film based on an extremely successful horror franchise. That's, I think, that that's the clue you need to mm-hmm. focus on, I think. And clue number three. I am a fan of particular sequels of some well-known horror franchises. All right. Who am I? Horror personality. So get those guesses in. All right, Brian. So now, last but not least, our Zubmondo for the week. Would you rather always have a little black piece of spinach stuck between your teeth (laughs) or a little booger in your nose that moves when you breathe? Oh, no, no. Definitely the spinach in my teeth. Definitely. You think so? Yeah. 
Well, especially nowadays, God forbid you have any kind of thing coming out of your nose or like that that considered a cold or something like that. People are going to freak out on you. So Plus, you can keep your mouth closed, but you can't really cover up your nose. That's true. And, and you know what? It's like, yeah, and here's the thing. It's like, okay, people could assume, you know, like you just came from dinner. Yeah. Okay. And it's not like you, you run out of dinner and go, the first thing you do is go brush your teeth. So that's like an acceptable social miscue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, however, if you get something fl- like fluttering <laughs> out your nose and like waving at the person you're talking to, yeah, that, that that's like, the, people start, yeah, people are like, Oh, he doesn't even blow his nose, or did he? Did he pick that and like left it there, or or is it is it something? There's way it, too many questions. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. There was a, and, and way too many assumptions <laughs> could be could be like surmised from that kind of a thing. So yeah, I would have to go with that one though. So um, so here's a here's a the facts that they give wonderful facts that this play that this book gives it says to clean the mucus out of their babies' noses. Mothers in some Eskimo tribes suck the nose clean with their mouths and spit the mucus out on the ground. Mm. But nothing suggests these same mothers go around sucking small bits of spinach out of their babies' mouths. Oh, no. Yeah. And then it says, if you're a cow, this is a no-brainer because cows hate spinach. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. I didn't either. Oh, so not... That's we. That's weird. You figure, but you're always chewing on, like, grass. That's I know my uh, guinea spinach. pigs love spinach. I love spinach. Yeah. We've got three guinea pigs now, Brian. We really? um yeah, we uh speaking of guinea pigs. Was the first one a guinea pig to see if you uh, yeah. the guinea pigs? <laughs> well we had we could, had two could... guinea pigs and then there's a school guinea pig named Walnut. And Olivia went to uh with the quarantine, the schools are closed down now, right? So oh, they were yeah, just yeah. coming in on the weekends to feed him and stuff. And I'm like, so this poor little guinea pig was there by himself like all week with nobody. Oh. And Olivia. Probably like, where did all these kids yeah, go? Yeah, <laughs> like nobody to like hold him or anything. So Olivia was like, well, oh. I'm going to like take him home. So the owner said, yeah, you, that's fine. You can take care of him. So we just kind of like pig napped him and uh, yep. with permission. And, um, yeah. and we're like foster. He's like our foster guinea pig. And I think. We we're probably going to just be able to keep him and just take him back to school on Friday, every Friday, so the kids can play with him when school gets back in session. Yeah, I was going to say, he's probably happy in the Wilson oh. home. You have like a pet loving oh, home. Oh, yeah, he it's... loves it. He's so happy now. And he's got yeah. guinea pig friends now. He was all by himself before. Yeah. So, and I, and he is so sweet. See, he's, he's not social distancing, but, and it's great because he's allowed not That's to right. social distance. That's right. Yeah. He is awesome. So he can enjoy himself. Why, why, why should we be selfish and make him social distance when he doesn't have to? I know. And guinea pigs get depressed if they're by themselves. So you're supposed to always have two guinea pigs. So, oh, yeah. And now you have three. So you got like a whole yeah, little guinea pig yeah, clan. Yeah. It's, fa- awesome. it's fantastic. And your, your kids love, are so good with pets. So that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're lots of fun. So, all right, guys. So we will uh, be back next week. We're going to drop another mini so this week, which may be dropped. Uh, maybe we'll drop it on a different day, Brian, just to kind of spread things out. Yeah. It could be Monday or two. We, depending on when this drops, it'll be probably the day after, just so you can catch yeah, up. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, look forward to that one. And uh, we'll see you back next week for a. Basically, a return to our regularly scheduled format. Yes. All right, guys. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun in quarantine. Uh, watching some uh, some really good cheesy horror movies. And don't forget to look behind you.